You've had it before from a lot of people and you're convinced. Buy land. It's that one investment that always brings returns. Land always appreciates. Land is that one thing where the deal can never go wrong. You know what I say? That's nonsense. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll have understood why I call it nonsense and you'll have made the very best decision for your circumstances. Also, I'm going to share and explain to you how not buying land actually earned me a lot of money and currently I'm able to buy land anywhere, wherever I want at any time. So stick around right through to the end of the video. So when it comes to buying land, there are five factors that always need to be considered. You need to sit down and consider these factors individually and see if they fit into who you are and the circumstances you're in. This will determine whether buying land is actually a great idea for you or not. And you need to make sure that you integrate all the five factors. None of these factors is independent of the other factor. So you need to make sure that all the five factors are intertwined and they work smoothly to help you determine whether you need to buy land or not. Otherwise, if you leave out just one of the factors, you could literally have a very terrible deal on land. The first point is the appreciation potential of the land. So you've always heard it, people saying that land never depreciates. That's certainly not true because once in a while, in a lot of rare circumstances, there's times where land actually does depreciate. It's very unlikely though, for example, for that to happen, you have to be in a place where maybe there is a natural disaster that happens or there is a toxic substance that gets emitted in the area or you're in a water area and everyone is running away no one is interested in the land the land will certainly depreciate and of course that's a potential for you to lose money but in most circumstances land will appreciate in value over a long time land will always appreciate in value over 5 10 20 years land will appreciate in value but by how much it appreciates actually plays a very large factor yeah so generally what usually happens happens with land is that it can appreciate anything between you know five and ten percent per year depending on wherever you are in some places the value can jump up by 50 a hundred percent in a really short time in a few months if there's something substantial that happens in the area for example if a particular mineral is discovered in the area or maybe the place suddenly becomes developed they introduce a very good road network or things like that it can really appreciate really quickly and such potentials are there for each and every place but what's usually going to happen is that land is going to appreciate gradually so if in your area for example land appreciates by let's say five percent but then there is something called inflation yeah we all understand inflation inflation then happens at six percent in the area where you are just like that you're losing one percent of your money because the land is only appreciating by five percent yet inflation is a whole six percent now in all reality it's very unlikely that inflation actually goes higher than the value of the land a lot of times the way people make money on deals on land is they'll just go buy land and then divide it up uh, a few days later or a few months later they sell land i've seen a lot of people doing that and if that's what you're going to be doing then that's a good deal it's a really good deal for you but most people are not going to be doing it that way because most people don't have enough enough money to buy land in cash most people are going to find different ways which are quite difficult of financing their land now that's where factor two actually comes into play because if you've decided to buy land and you've decided that it's in a good place the value of the land actually raises at an okay rate maybe you know 10 percent uh 20 percent you're not going to be losing money on that land through inflation then you need to consider where you're going to be getting the money to pay the land from so there are usually three options where you're going to be getting money from option number one is your salary option number two is savings and option number three is a bank loan now option number one and option number two which is salary and savings are actually going to be discussed a little bit later on because they play into point number four quite nicely but let's go to option number three which is the bank now this is actually a very common way of people paying for land and it's one that the banks love because well they get to get interest and they know that when you're paying for land in the end you can even use that land as security or you can use you know your salary as security so they will give you money 100 percent they'll give you money but they're going to give you money at an interest rate that's the first thing you need to remember and depending on where you are some interest rates can go up to 15 20 percent think about it so you're buying land in a location where it's appreciating by 10%, but then you're paying 15% of interest 
on that land. The other thing is you're going to be using your salary to pay for that land. So have you noticed that you're now losing money? Can you imagine all the other things you could utilize your money for? So let's say you're earning $10,000 a month, yeah? And then you're utilizing maybe $5,000 of that money or $4,500 of that money to pay back the bank. You're paying back the bank. That means that's $4,500 that you're actually not going to be able to utilize to do anything else that could take you forward. Money that you're using to pay a debt, money that you're using to pay land that you're actually not using land that's vacant there because most probably by the time you go to the bank to borrow you don't have money isn't it you don't have money to pay for the land so you're literally not developing the land you understand so if you're not developing the land and you're just leaving the land there then you're wasting money that you could have utilized for a lot of things and that leads us into point number three which is the development potential of the land yeah it doesn't make sense guys it doesn't make sense for you to buy land that you're not going to develop the thing about money is that money should always be making money if you're buying land and you think you're buying land as an investment it's not like you have too much money to just you know throw away and put it in land if that's the case you just have too much money you can put it away then that's an awesome idea you know putting it in land is a great idea you don't have anything else to use the money for you know you have investments you have businesses running and all those kinds of things then putting the money in land is a good idea but if you do have things you need to use that money for simply putting it in land doesn't make sense if you're not going to be developing that area you're not going to be putting apartments you're not going to be putting a building maybe a structure that you can use for making money Money, you're not going to be putting a farm that can bring you back money then it doesn't make sense for you to just buy land and leave it there now of course what you're thinking about is well even if I just leave it there its value is going to raise true its value is going to raise but there's something that you're missing out on and that's called cash flow have you heard of something called the opportunity cost that's actually our point number four opportunity cost now that's something that you actually need to think about very deeply every time you consider buying land land alone in itself doesn't bring money have you seen people in villages who own huge chunks of land you know hundreds and hundreds of acres and these guys can't afford food they can't even get money to buy seeds to plant on their land to get back money that means land in itself being there is useless and you might tell yourself well I could sell it a few years later and get money that's true but then you're wasting time you're wasting your life have you thought about the fact that your life is finite yeah you're probably 40 years of age and you're only going to die maybe when you're 80 years so you have 40 years left to live and each and every one of those days actually counts so if you're wasting 10 years of your life waiting for land to appreciate and then you sell it what else could you have done in that life how about you get the money earlier on utilize that money and you can always buy land later on so that's called the opportunity cost what else could you have used that money for what could you have used that money for you see i'm personally a very big proponent for starting businesses now of course that's the craziest idea for anyone who is considering buying land because they are thinking well land is that thing which is assured i can always have my money back but a business there are very high chances for a business failing in fact 80 percent of all businesses that start fail within five years and in five years time my land would certainly have increased in value okay that's cool it's understandable for you to think about it from that perspective but you know what you are having a failure mentality when we talk about 80 percent of businesses starting and fail it involves everyone who starts a business whether they understand anything to do with business or not whether they have read whether they have, they have researched whether they have done due diligence to ensure that the business succeeds or not they don't care they just start a business actually on this channel over here i've shared tips and how to actually start a business that can never fail guys this video is actually a great one it's a great tool i'll leave a link to that video in the description because when you follow of these steps you reduce the likelihood of you failing actually you have an 80% chance of having your business succeed of course now you're thinking to yourself well 80% is still a chance of the business failing compared to 100% chance of the value of the land increasing well just to let you know in case you didn't know there is no 100 chance that you will be alive in you know five years time from now have you thought about that so if for you your goal is consistently to just survive live 
comfortably and not risk losing anything in your life, then it's okay for you to buy land, you know. Get your money, use your salary as security, uh, go buy land, get a loan from the bank or, I don't know, use your savings, buy land and you'll be comfortable. A few years later, you can sell it or you can develop it, whichever way it is. But if for you, your goal is to grow, your goal is to thrive, your goal is to excel and be at the top, then buying land doesn't make sense. You know why? Because buying land is going to tie up your money. And what does that mean? You're not going to have cash. And have you heard the saying that cash is king? Yeah, cash is king. When you do have cash, you're the master. For me, for example, when I decided to start a business, I personally had some amount of money that I could have used to buy land. I wanted to start a farm and I could have used the money to buy land first and then I would probably have waited maybe two years and then I would have been able to utilize my savings to start building the farm but then I would have lost two whole years. So you know what I did? I went and asked my dad if I can use his land in the meantime to set up my farm. That way I can utilize the money to start a business. The business then can bring me money because I started a farm which actually thrived. It grew really well it became successful and now I could utilize that money to buy other pieces of land you know I've expanded I've built farms currently guys I own acres and acres of land and I'm still buying land because I'm in position to buy the land yeah I have cash flow cash is king even right now if someone came and told me that you know I have a piece of land uh, that I'm selling and I consider and the piece of land looks good to me I'll just tell the person give me a few days I'll bring the money and we buy you know why because I have cash flow, I consistently have money coming in. Unlike if I had just decided to use my money to buy land earlier on, then I would be stuck. If someone came to me a few years later on and they are telling me to buy land, I'm still not able to buy the land because I'm still paying back a bank loan. I'm still now figuring out what can I use this land for. I don't have cash, you understand? So you need to make sure that you get a cash flow. Now I know what you're telling me, yeah? What if I don't have land that I can borrow? For example, I utilize my dad's land. Well, I know people who have actually rented out land. Guys, in a lot of circumstances, instances renting is actually even better than buying because that doesn't tie up your cash flow renting could only be you know a very very small tiny percentage of the amount of money that you could have used to buy the land and then you use the rest of the money to actually start a business that brings you money in the end the main focus of this point is for you to understand that having money coming into your pockets it's what's going to bring you opportunities you see opportunities will always present themselves but if you don't have money opportunities are useless opportunities are totally useless if you don't have money i've been able to grasp a lot of the opportunities that come my way because i can Currently have cash flow yeah I do have savings I have money that I put away but I have a business that consistently brings me money and I can utilize this money to get all these opportunities why because I used the money at the beginning to create something that brings me money and not just to buy land which is not going to bring me money at all but also there are even other opportunities that in the end might even be better alternatives sometimes things like mutual funds things like you know saving in circles just those might be able to even bring you better returns give you savings that you can utilize a year later on or two years later on instead of buying land in an area where the value of the land is going to increase really really slowly you're going to struggle to find someone to buy the land and just like that you're going to end up in a really complicated hard position and point number five is risk tolerance of the buyer now this plays a very huge part when it comes to buying land because usually people who buy land are people who are very aversive to risk they don't want to take any risks in their lives and sometimes that's understandable now this can be caused by a few things number one is usually age the most likely thing yeah someone who is old someone who is grown up is less likely to try investing in something very risky like a business because they're imagining i've saved all this money for a big chunk of my life how do i just lose it like that yeah and after i lose it i don't have a very long time to live the likelihood that i'm going to make it again is very low now it's quite understandable that such people make such decisions and in that case there's actually a case for it which is quite understandable and i wouldn't blame that person so much but for someone younger who has a lot of time to actually make and grow money i don't understand why they would now just be trying to keep money instead of increasing their chances of actually making money of course like i said i totally understand that people fear losing money they fear losing things our fear for losing things is actually greater than our desire for gaining things so it makes a lot of sense that people would do that but for your very own good if you want to 
to thrive, if you want to be successful, the advice is go for it, guys. Go for it. I understand that you're scared and you don't want to risk. But in life, the terrible things we imagine actually rarely happen. Just sit down, think about all the bad things you consistently imagine might happen in your life and how many of them have happened. Few, if any, yeah? So the likelihood is that you're going to succeed if you actually make steps in the direction of success. That's what's more likely going to happen. So if you're still young, you have time, then it just makes more sense that you put in a bit more effort to actually thriving and growing your money instead of trying to keep money. Land is a way of keeping money, yeah? It can be a way of growing money, but it's primarily a way of keeping money compared to the other ways you can get money. For example, compared to investing in a business, it's simply a way of keeping money. And you see, avoiding risk is a trait of brilliant people. Brilliant people don't want to take risk. They don't want to carry risk. They don't want to be in a position where they might lose money, yeah? Because they are brilliant. Brilliant. They don't want losses. Unfortunately, it's not a good trait. It's a trait that ensures that your chances of success are very low. Yeah, because you don't see new opportunities that come by. And because of that, Damba people actually usually end up making a lot more money than brilliant people. The Damba people actually end up succeeding way more times than brilliant people. And so I've made a video, I'll leave a link to it right here about how and why Damba people actually usually end up succeeding. They end up being the employers of you, the brilliant people. And I think if you check it out, you're actually going to learn a lot that's going to propel you in the future and actually ensure that you make huge changes to your life that are going to give you a lot of success. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell. Catch you very soon with another video. Lots of love. Bye-bye.